Hey now, everybody. We are DDO Players, and we are here today speaking with a few people from Becom Studios. You might not be familiar with the studio, but you are familiar with a announcement they just made. We posted upon it. It is a Tales from Candlekeep, which is the Tomb of Annihilation board game video game adaption. We're going to get into that all about the game when uh, the game is coming out. Maybe we'll see if they answer that question and a lot more. But let's start off with a simple question. Who is with me on the uh, call today? Hi, you're talking with uh, Paul Gadbois, senior producer at Becom. And I'm uh, Olivier, uh, lead game designer also at Becom Studios. All right. Thank you so much for taking some time out today. And you recently announced Tales from Candlekeep, which is a new upcoming video game that is based on the Tomb of Annihilation board game. So give me the elevator pitch for what the game is. So Tales from Candlekeep, uh, Tomb of Annihilation, is a turn-based dungeon-crawling game based on the Dungeons & Dragons Adventure System board games. And it's developed by Become Studios, which it, it, it is us. So how did this come about that you decided to take the Adventure System board games, which have you know been around for a while? Why now did you think was the perfect opportunity to translate this into a video game? Well, uh, we have a very good relationship with Wizard of the Coast. And uh, it's been in the talk for a, a pretty long time, but... As you, you, you may know, they're in a, a big uh, uh, marketing uh, push right now for, yeah, for a campaign for a Tomb of Annihilation. So, like you said, it's the perfect moment to release. Uh, while WizKids are releasing their next board game uh, with the Adventure System, it, it, yeah, it was the perfect timing for us to uh, release that as well. So, can you tell me how, I know in the article that was in Dragon Plus, you did say that the the video game adaptation kind of varies a little bit from the board game. Can you tell me a little bit about the differences? Right, so, yeah. Well, first, we really needed to stick uh, as much as we could to uh, the board game, but... Uh, also, as a video game, uh, we, needed, we needed to have a, a faster pace, so we automated uh, a lot of stuff uh, so you don't have to keep track of everything, uh, but also uh, we added uh, a, lot of, a lot of different quests, actually, so you, you can keep, well, you can see uh, what our heroes do between uh, the main quests. It's an interesting take to see uh, the journey of our heroes, but we also added... Uh, a few, we, we added a few tweaks to, to their system to keep that interesting, like the, um, uh, the player account level up. So uh, as you may have read in the, in the article, uh, well, it's the player that actually levels up and not the heroes. So we can keep giving uh, rewards uh, very often to the players, and that's uh, directly linked to our crafting system, which is also different from the board game. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that because I know I did read a little bit about that crafting system. Can you explain exactly what that is and how it works? Well, um, <clears throat> the crafting system, basically, uh, it's, uh, it's how you upgrade your characters because we also added uh, difficulty settings uh, in the game. Uh, we have a normal difficulty, but we have a hard difficulty and the horrific difficulty. Uh, <laughs> I like it, horrific, great. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll <laughs> players know the, the Tomb of Horrors and Tomb of, of Annihilation uh, campaign to be a, a pretty harsh one. So uh, we needed to have that in a, also in the video game. So it, in order to, uh, to uh, stick to that difficulty, we also needed our heroes to, uh, to be able to, uh, to upgrade their stats and also their, uh, their attack values and stuff like that. So uh, basically you, uh, you collect different uh, crafting materials that range from a common a rarity to legendary, um, and that will uh, let you craft specific items uh, to upgrade, uh, let's say, your, your armor for your, your characters. Uh, if you want to have, uh, for example, Dragon Bait as your tank, you could focus on his armor, but you could also uh, choose to just uh, really focus on uh, on its attack power and just uh, upgrade uh, and craft the uh, the upgrades for its main and secondary weapon. And now that uh, the crafting material you're going to find as you explore the tiles in the dungeon. 
Yeah, uh, it's a, a bit different than that because uh, WizKids uh, added in their uh, their new board game uh, treasure chests, uh, so you can find items to use right away in the dungeon. And we use that system to uh, give uh, a second uh, second pass of chests at the end of the uh, of each adventure. And that's where you will uh, collect the uh, crafting materials because our uh, uh, our treasure chests also have different rarities uh, that range from common to legendary. Uh, and yeah, basically that's it. You, you get your crafting materials in uh, in chests outside, well between adventures. <clears throat> so basically, for every chest you find in game, you also get as a bonus in your uh, I guess successful uh, story completion. Right. Okay, and then I know that everything is procedurally done, so each dungeon is going to be different, so that's going to add to the gameplay. You want to kind of talk a little bit about how you're making that happen? Right, so uh, as you must know, in in all of the the Adventure System board game, they have a a tile system that uh, basically replaces the the dungeon master. Uh, So each time you you have to discover, uh, well, the next style for a dungeon, it's always different because it works like uh, like cards. You have right. to shuffle them before using them. So uh, every time you discover a new tile, this changes the layout of your dungeon, and that happens in every adventure. So uh, and it's also affected by the decisions you make if you want to, you know, go left first or or right first or go forward. So every time the the dungeon is built dynamically based on your decisions. Okay. And then um, I know you kind of talked a little bit about you have characters that, that you're taking through the dungeon, and I know you have four of them. Can you tell us which four characters we're going to be able to play? Yeah, so uh, first one is uh, our human ranger. It's Artis Simber, a popular character from the, uh, the uh, D&D universe. Uh, we also have Dragonbait that's coming back. He's uh, a uh, companion of, uh, of Artis. He's I a, was so happy to see Dragon Bait. Yeah, he's he's great. He's <laughs> pretty strong, actually. And um, we uh, WizKids, uh, they added two characters for their board game that are, are uh, brand new, uh, which are uh, Birdsong, a female tabaxi bard, and uh, we have Ashara, that's in Arakokra, a wizard. And do you have any plans to add any more characters? Um, <clears throat> yes, of course. <laughs> I mean, <clears throat> Uh, basically, we're currently, you know, focusing on having the the best game possible at launch. Um, we are already planning additional content, DLC, <clears throat> and additional characters would be part of that. Excellent. So, can you walk me through how gameplay actually works? I know you guys, you know, we're showing the game off at uh, PAX and also at Hascon, but for... Yeah. The people that didn't get to make it there, can you kind of explain to me how you actually play the game and how it works? So, like I said before, uh, we really wanted to stick to the uh, the flow of the board game. In the board game, you have three different phases, and in those phases, uh, that lets uh, players well play without a dungeon master. Uh, so, <clears throat> the three phases are hero phase, exploration phase, and villain phase. Uh, those are, are pretty explicit. I mean, um, uh, what you do in uh, in uh, in the hero phase is all your actions. You, if you want to attack, move, use an item, use a potion, uh, that's where that's going to happen. When uh, if you want to explore, what's happening is that you have to stand. Well, your your active hero has to stand uh, on an unexplored edge of uh, any uh, visible tile, and when your uh, hero phase ends and you go through the exploration phase, that's where new tiles will appear. Um, <clears throat> uh, and then the villain phase is where the uh, the actual monsters and villains will play. Uh, there's a bit more details about that, but uh, I won't go uh, too far uh, in there. Okay, and then how does combat work then? Because I know that's a big part of the board right. games as well. So I'm I'm assuming in the game as well, there's going to be lots and lots of combat. Uh, well, uh, when you play the board game, uh, you have a selection of uh, of powers. Uh, it's described as uh, uh, as attacks and also as spells. But everything, uh, every different hero has different powers that you have to choose before uh, going. Uh, 
in adventures. Uh, we have the same system. Every act action, every attack, every spell is uh, a, a power. Uh, you have uh, at-will powers, daily powers, and utility, utility powers. Uh, your at-will powers are your uh, basic attacks that you can reuse uh, at every turn, but your daily and utility powers uh, are, uh, well, they have one charge. Uh, there are different items and uh, events that will let you recharge them uh, without having to restart a new quest. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it. When you want to when you want to attack, basically, is that you have to select the power you want to use, and then your target, and uh, you're good to go. Okay, so it's pretty much just how it kind of works in the the board game then as well. Yeah, and this it, and this happens during your hero phase. So during hero phase, you can either decide to you know move around. Or you know, go into combat, and monsters and villains they appear through the uh, exploration phase. So once you discover a new tile, there's an event, and then if that tile had uh, spawners on them, then the monsters would appear. So obviously they're gonna attack first in their villain phase, and then when it goes back to hero phase, you're gonna get into combat. Right. Okay. And then does it work kind of like in the board game as well that uh, the computer AI will move the monsters accordingly as well? Right, so uh, every different monsters uh, monster has a uh, its own behavior. Uh, so, let's say for example, you have a goblin that's ha uh, he, it has to find its target first, but when it's done, it can uh, attack. Uh, it can then attack afterwards. Uh, it works exactly like in the board game, so uh, it's uh, pretty much automatic what happens in uh, in there. Um, yeah, so you also have the uh, the encounter. Uh, we we created a new phase that's the encounter phase. Um, so you must know that uh, in the board game, the encounters are uh, pretty heavy on the uh, on the players. They they hit pretty hard, and they're uh, almost all uh, negative, if I can say. Yes, uh, they are <laughs> very much so. So we needed to have that in the in, in the video game also. Uh, so what happens is that if you don't discover a new tile, you're going to get hit by an encounter. But if you also discover a, a tile that's flagged as, as a hard tile, you also get hit by an encounter. So uh, players must uh, be ready to, uh, to face a pretty hard game. And I know that, uh, you know, the Tomb of Horrors and the Tomb of Annihilation both feature a lot of traps. So I'm guessing there is going to be some traps that we're going to have to take care of as well, yeah. correct? Yeah, you... Uh, we also have traps. Uh, traps are uh, are a bit different. Well, they're they're exactly like in the the, the board the board game that's going to be released uh, very soon. Uh, and how they work is uh, pretty much you can disarm them if you want. If you fail, you're going to get hit by uh, by the trap. But you also have uh, those simple traps can become uh, complex. And what they do is they have a random effect. Pretty uh, that uh, looks a lot like the encounters, but uh, they're also pretty violent, yeah. And then I, I know we we talked a little bit ago about the procedural dungeon design. So right. how big can the dungeons get with that? <laughs> I guess if you're unlucky, it's pretty good, pretty big actually. Yeah. Uh, if you want to uh, to not stick to the actual objectives, you could. I think you could get pretty far in, in, in the dungeon, actually. You could get to 30 different tiles and even more, I guess. Uh, that's going to depend on how your, your computer uh, uh, can, uh, your, your actual computer's performance, actually. Wow, so they can get pretty big then. So, And then are you free to pretty much explore the dungeon, or are you kind of stuck on a linear path that you have yeah. to take? The, the only linear path you you can uh, follow is like following the objectives we uh, we propose to you in the, in the quest but uh, if you want to disregard the objectives and explore you're free to do it right awesome so then but basically to I, I guess for lack of a better term I call it a the win condition you will have to do the objectives to actually finish but then other than that as you said you're, you're free just to explore to your heart's content that's exactly right. it yeah Awesome. That is cool. And then I know uh, you did talk a little bit about the crafting system. So can you talk about some of the gear that uh, you, you will be able to have and craft to make better? 
Yeah, so we uh, created uh, new crafting materials that are, uh, you know, you have the uh, the classic uh, metals and gems, but we added different uh, leathers and uh, and uh, also wood. Uh, all the, the woods, uh, however, are all taken from the actual uh, of, of the uh, flora. Uh, yeah, the, the lore's flora, actually, on the Faerun. Um but all the items, or not all, but uh, almost all of the equipment that you're going to be able to craft are all uh, created by us. But we have legendary items that are taken from the, uh, the D&D lore, and we also have the uh, named, some of the named uh, weapons, let's say, bookmark for uh, uh, the, the Magical Dagger of Artis and uh, Holy Avenger, the uh, Dragon, Dragon Bait's Longsword. Uh, we also had added that to the uh, to the game. Awesome. And then I know just a little while ago on Facebook, I saw a post you guys put up a little bit about the music, and you released uh, one track of that. You want to talk about how music and sound is going to work? Sure. So, uh, so here uh, we we we're creating the the the, the music, and what we uh, what we're doing basically is just get inspired by how we think that. That music and chilts would sound how how the, the, uh, the, the folklore would actually what instruments would they use so uh, what we did is uh, use different uh, instruments uh, from all over the world to create something uh, different uh, something uh, instruments that wouldn't be heard together if I can say uh, to uh, really uh, create something new and with the the dead curse uh, befallen on uh, on on Chult, uh, we wanted to have a, to keep that eerie feeling, uh, that that sense of like wonder, but also danger. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, uh, we, we wanted also the sound design to be uh, pretty impactful because our animations and effects are uh, do so as well, uh, but never steal the show from uh, from the visual. And I know I did touch on it earlier, but you guys were at PAX and you were at HasCon. So what was the reaction that you got from uh, people that came to the booth to check the game out? It was actually awesome. Uh, <clears throat> very, very positive feedback. Um, as you know, making video games in general, not, not you know, specifically D&D and whatnot, it, there's always a concern, you know, will the, you know, the outside or, or your, your potential like players find it fun is it accessible is it understandable right and, and we had like a this limited demo just for packs that we did quite a quite a lot of polish on to make sure uh, was uh, you know up to par to the uh, dnd uh, i guess ip and lore and all that and reception was awesome we we, we can see it through the all the comments we get on the uh, on the facebook and and all our social media, even on the Steam, uh, you know, coming soon uh, page. So it was very, very nice, actually. And I know right now you, you just announced that it is going to be available on PC and Mac on Steam. But is there any plans to maybe do like an iPad or Android version? Currently, uh, <clears throat> like I, I, we I mentioned uh, earlier, the focus right now is the best experience possible for the this you know, initial Steam release. Mm-hmm. Uh, we do have an open mind, possible plans for maybe a console version, maybe high-end mobile version. Uh, we have not excluded any of the options, but currently our main focus is the uh, PC Mac and make sure that one's just, you know, gains a, a success. And that uh, makes total sense, actually. Well, then I guess a follow-up to that is I'm probably not going to get an answer, but when are we going to see this release? Well, I can give you a, I guess, an exclusive scoop here. <laughs> I expected it in October. Awesome. Okay. So that is something to definitely look forward to. And I guess I'll kind of start wrapping this up here. Well, you want to tell me a little bit about the history of Becom Studios and maybe some of the other titles that you worked on? Sure. Be- uh, Becom Studios has been around for almost 20 years now. Um it, it, you know, the company went through a lot of changes during the 20 years, uh, working a lot in the uh, publicity, 
uh, website business. Uh, worked uh, for like well, already seven, eight years with the Wizards of the Coast, which is owned by Asbro as well. So we've been, you know, making websites, applications. We have a uh, title uh, that's free to play on, on mobile, which is called uh, Little Lords of Twilight. Um, we've released some Star Wars game through Disney as well a couple of years ago. Um, yeah, Become is a work for hire company. Started off as a, a work for hire company, but with L- Little Lords of Twilight, uh, which was our first uh, own IP that we released for uh, mobile devices. Uh, now with uh, Dungeons and Dragons, uh, Tales from Kendall Keep, it's our uh, second big uh, biggest. Uh, I mean, uh, IP in a. Uh, and uh and video game actually awesome well great well we are going to look forward to checking this out uh as you said sometimes in october we'll we'll keep it a mystery until there uh is there anything else about the game that maybe i didn't ask or didn't cover that you guys kind of wanted to talk about or do you think we pretty much got uh a lot of information out to the people that i know are clamoring for it because i see people on social media and on your facebook and twitter and everything just asking questions and talking everybody is super super excited well, there's uh, there's a system we uh, we can talk about in the uh, in, in the game. Uh, as you may know, in uh, in the board games, our, your heroes can level up, uh, but throughout the thirteen quests, they can only level up once, which is uh, not very mu- uh, much. <clears throat> yeah, so, it's very limiting for a video game. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And so what we added is the uh, the adrenaline rush system. Uh, so basically, that uh, what that is is that we kept the the stat boost that leveling up in the board game gives, and uh, made a temporary uh, stat boost system in the uh, in the video game. Meaning that you gain adrenaline by killing monsters, and uh, you can trigger that adrenaline rush to uh, only one hero at a time uh, by spending that adrenaline. Uh, thing is. If you want to uh, interrupt or cancel a, uh, a an encounter, uh, you also have to spend adrenaline. So it's a trade-off. You have to decide to keep your adrenaline and be hit by devastating encounters, or uh, just screw the the adrenaline rush and and uh, stay alive. And that, that uh, I did remember one question I was going to ask you. Uh, how many players can play this? Is it just uh, solo, you're controlling all four characters, or can you just do solo with one character, or how does that work? Well, at, at launch, this is a, it's a, it will be a single-player game. Okay. But as uh, a single-player game, you still get to control all, all of the heroes on the board. So it's not a uh, one, one hero at a time uh, gameplay. You actually have a full party. So you have all four and you're going through. Okay. And then do you have plans maybe to, in the future, maybe as a DLC or expansion or a patch to maybe add multiplayer into the equation at any point? Or is that just not on the table at all? No, it is actually. I think it's one of our highest uh, second priority. I mean, once the game is out, it's it's something we, we want to tackle very uh, very soon, actually. Awesome. Well, that sounds exciting. And like I, I was excited when I read the article in Dragon Plus. And after talking to you guys, I think I'm more excited now to actually check the game out than I was before. So I thank you very much for taking time out today. And as I said... If I can add maybe one, one last uh, thing. You can feel free to add whatever you would like. I mean, for, for everyone <laughs> that's going to listen to this podcast, you know, if, if you're hyped about the game and stuff, you know, support us and go and... and on Steam and put it in your wish list. This is going to help uh, promote the game, help yeah. the game. Go on our channel on YouTube, follow subscribe us. Subscribe everywhere. Yeah. And I will add links to all of that down in the show notes for this episode as well. Yeah. And I know you guys are getting ready to do a Twitch live stream, and that's going to be on Friday, September the 15th. Uh, it may or may not have already taken place when this is released. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get this out before, but you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so uh, this is going to be our first uh, uh, gameplay walkthrough, basically. We're going to go through the game, answer some questions, uh, yeah. present uh, the visual, the, the, the audio, everything. Uh, in, yeah. yeah, this is going to be actually the, the first showcase for people who did not get the chance to attend PAX or ASCON. So it's going to be, yeah, our first worldwide uh, 
Yeah, so what we're going to sh uh, showcase is a demo version of the game. Not everything is going to be in there because we're uh, the development of the game is uh, is farther than that. But you you're going to get to see uh, how the game uh, plays. And uh, yeah, what is your Twitch channel that people can watch that on? Uh, it's Tales from Candlekeep. Excellent, and I will add that down in the show notes as well. So Great. as I said, thank you so much, guys, for taking some time out and talking about the game, and we will look forward to actually uh, being able to play it uh, rather soon here. Well, thank you. Thanks to you. You're yeah, welcome. Thanks.